Michael Faraday, who later became famous for his work on electricity and magnetism, unwittingly carried out an experiment that would begin the long descent towards absolute zero. He was asked to explore the properties of a newly discovered pungent gas called chlorine. This experiment was potentially explosive, which is perhaps why it was left to Faraday. And perhaps also why Dr. Andrew Shidlow is curious to repeat it today. We are about to undertake an exceedingly dangerous experiment in which Michael Faraday in 1823 heated this substance here, the hydrate of chlorine, in a sealed tube. Is that sealed? That's sealed, Andrew. That's absolutely brilliant. In the original experiment, Faraday took the sealed tube and heated the end containing the crystals. He put the other end in an ice bath. Soon, he noticed yellow chlorine gas being given off. Because the gas is being produced, pressure is building up. But because this side is so very cold, hopefully what we'll see is some tiny oily droplets of chlorine, liquid chlorine, being produced. It's, it's the pressure which is causing this. Ray, this is where it starts to get dangerous. So if you now take a few steps back. When Faraday did the experiment, a visitor, Dr. Paris, called in to see what he was up to. Paris pointed out some oily matter in the bottom of the tube. Faraday was curious and decided to break open the tube. Right, so let's have a look inside here. The explosion sent shards of glass flying. With the sudden release of pressure, the oily liquid vanished. And there we are. Is that what that's, happened? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. It popped open, glass flew. And can you detect the strong smell of chlorine? I can now. Absolutely. Well, he detected the strong smell of chlorine, and this, um, this was a, a major mystery for him. Faraday soon realized the increased pressure inside the sealed tube had caused the gas to liquefy. Later, he used the same technique to liquefy ammonia gas. He noticed that on releasing the pressure, the liquid evaporated, triggering a dramatic drop in temperature. He predicted that one day this cooling might be useful. There is great reason to believe that this cooling technique with ammonia may be successfully employed for the preservation of animal and vegetable substances for the purposes of food. But Faraday's idea of using ammonia as a refrigerant was ahead of its time. Besides, he had no interest in commercial.